6. And uh, it is a uh, portion of scripture on prayer. And we're going to use it as a springboard into a thought. And then from there, we will uh, get into, uh, from that, we will go end up back there in the uh, message. But I want to read these verses, starting in verse number 9. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Help us to honor thee. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take these thoughts and, and deal with praying with the imminent return in mind. Praying with the imminent return in mind. I, I've been wondering about the thought of this idea of how much we really believe in the imminent return of Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ. How much do we really expect the rapture to happen tomorrow morning if it does not happen before we leave here tonight? And uh, I, I, in the past few days, I've been in a conversation with multiple times dealing with this idea of the imminent return of Christ and that in, and involving our prayer life. Now, uh, let, let me say this as I consider the imminent return of Christ. I, I'm, uh, I'm not saying that we should not be as the ant and prepare uh, our, our, in the summer for what's coming up. I'm not saying that because in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 25, the answer are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. But in some parts here, I do believe that we have gotten to the place where we're so focused on our future in America, our future in this land, that we forget that the Lord's coming back tomorrow if He does not come back to die. Um, we, we ought to consider her ways and ways of the end and not be as a slugger who, 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 the slugger who lives haphazardly. Uh, they're, they're sleeping when we should be working um, and then expecting to have supply in uh, our want in the upcoming days ahead. We ought not be like the slugger. I matter of fact, Proverbs chapter 6 tells us we ought to not be like a slugger. We ought to consider the ant. We ought to look to the ant. Um, here, how's he say it? He said, go to the ant, thou slugger, and consider, consider her ways and be wise. Now that verse, I do not want to apply to me. You say, why? I don't want to be a slugger. And he tells the slugger to go to the ant. He said he didn't say those who are diligent to go to the ant. He said, go to the ant, thou slugger. So if you're not a slugger, living haphazardly, sleeping when you ought to be working, and uh, uh, just being, just saying, well, I'm going to take life as it comes, and I don't really care. If you're not of that kind of manner, but you're a diligent worker, uh, don't worry about the ant. He tells the slugger to go to the ant, but then he gives us some simple realities about the ant. You can consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide or overseer or ruler, provided their meat in the summer and gathered their food in the harvest. Now I will tell you this, we are not as the ant. We are not as the ant. You say, why? Number one, we ought to be diligent, but we have an overseer and a ruler and a guide. I have a guide. It is the Lord Himself Amen. who leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. 
I have a ruler. He is my master. I have an overseer. He sees everything I do. He sees my past afar off. He knoweth my thoughts afar off. He seeth the path that I take. He does oversee. So I am not as the ant. I am not as the slugger. And let me say this. But we ought, he is telling them, listen, on one side, you ought to be looking toward the future. On the other side, you ought to be living like the Lord is coming back any moment. And I do want us to understand that because we know that we are to lay up treasures for the future. For a future day. But where are our treasures to be laid up? In heaven, where moth and rust do not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. Why? Because the Lord is coming back. With our eyes looking toward the Lord and our heart hoping for His soon seeing Him for whom we long to look upon. We are to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. That is Matthew 6 and verse number 20. And some will say that we need to live a balanced life. We need to be balanced and plan for our future on earth. And I will ask them, show me one New Testament scripture. One New Testament scripture that says that. You'll not find a New Testament scripture that talks about me looking toward a future on earth. Yeah. That is American theology. And America and the, the, did not write the Bible. God wrote the Bible. Good. Good. Right. Now somebody's going to say, are you against a person having a savings account? I'm not against you doing anything in the will of God. Are you against a person having a 401k? Or an IRA or any of those things. I'm not against anything if God told you to do it. But God challenges us and He continues He challenges us to set our affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For we're dead and our life is hid with Christ in God. Now, why does God not challenge His eternal people to think about an earthly future? I want to give you a few reasons. And let me say this. Not, it's not because He needs our money and our treasures so that He can supply for our future. God does not need your money. Amen. God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And if He were hungry, He'd not have. Day. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. You do not tithe because God needs your money. Matter of fact, you might not tithe. So uh, I'm not preaching on tithe tonight, but that's not, the reason a person should tithe is not because God needs your money. He owns everything. That's right. Come on. All right. What's he need your money for? And he can break a little bit more gold in his own self. That missionary can walk out of that missionary needs money. That missionary can walk out his door and guess what? Five o'clock and go right outside the door. God can make it just like that. Yes, yes. He made the earth. He said, let there be light, there was light. Come on. He doesn't need us to do his job. No. He uses us for our for his glory yeah. so that we can get yeah. in on his job. Yeah. We're labors together with God. We're not labors together for God. It is not because he needs our money to supply for our future. He does not need our treasure. And it's not, number two, because he wants to hold us down during our earthly venture. Come on, come on. Some would say, well, 
God, the church, wants you to give them the money, and that's going to keep you from getting the things you want today. Nope. And that's going to hold you down. Nope. It's not because God wants to keep you from having it. Oh, no. He has enough and to spare, and every calf on the branch belongs to Him and His children. Right. Let me just say this. Uh, it's not based upon God's need or because God is need. It is not based upon that. Listen, he, that dead young man, he, his father said, listen, every calf on this ranch is yours. Why do you wait? Why are you sitting there not using it? If you want to have a party with your friends, why don't you just invite them over? We'd have killed the fat calf on your behalf. Yeah. Your brother who was dead is now alive. Why not kill the bad calf? Have a good time and enjoy the fact that you had somebody uh, come back home, my yeah. You ought to be rejoicing. It is not based upon God's need, that God's need is, has a need to be needed. And it's not because He is needed or that it's because He is needy. The reason our Lord does not deal with His children about setting up, setting up retirement plans or other future stuff on earth is for two reasons. Number one, we don't know what a day may bring forth. There you go. Both not a tomorrow. No man, a man knows not what a day may bring forth. At least that is what Proverbs 27 tells us. Yeah. We don't know what a day may bring forth. So here we are. And uh, so, boast not thyself of tomorrow, tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And we can see in the book of James, the book of James, uh, brother, brother Garrett preached on all this stuff in the book of James, but in the book of James, I've got to turn over there. There it is, I can just use my thing here, and I get turned over there where I'm supposed to be at. In the book of James, in, in uh, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, he says, go, go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go to such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away. Yeah. So why does God not? We don't even know what we're going to have a future. Come on. So he's not going to worry about us setting up for the future. But number two, and uh, let, me, let me just say this. The Lord, God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit all know what our days come, what's going to happen tomorrow in our lives. What they're going to allow to come into our lives tomorrow. Whether everything's going to burn up or everything's going to uh, get better. The Lord knows these, knows these things. In Matthew chapter 10, in verses 29, and uh, he makes this statement. In verses 29, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more valued than many sparrows. Now let me just say this. God knows the steps that you take and He keeps up with the hairs on your head. You don't think He can supply your need? I'm talking physical need. Why would He, if you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, He does and He knows what He's going to do. I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. That is one reason that God has not told us about setting up for an earthly future. But the other is, this is so simple. You and I have a strong human nature, carnal nature, that tends to think of earthly things. We're going to naturally think about, what about tomorrow? What about the future? Oh my. Oh my. You, do, do you know, I mean, as you get older, you think about, oh, what are, do we have enough for retirement? Do we have enough? Is Social Security going to be here when, when uh, I get old enough for it? 
Probably not for you younger folks. It might be when I get old enough. And uh, so those of you who are already on it, I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, don't, I heard a man told me the other day. He's 80 plus years old. And he said, don't look forward to getting old. And I looked at him and I said, yes, sir. I don't plan on it. I don't plan on getting old. I plan on the rapture happening tonight or tomorrow. And, 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 and you know, I, I don't plan, I plan on the Lord's return. I plan on, uh, I, I plan on dying before I get old. I plan on all those things. I mean, a few minutes later, you know, I mentioned that for a person that's, uh, and this is what I told him, I said, for a person that's so against growing old, you're spending a lot of energy and a lot of money trying to stay alive. And he just got me with that. I said, I, I, I don't want you to die. But the reality is, if you're not looking forward to getting old, then why do we put so much energy in trying to get old? Now let me say this. I'm not promoting haphazard living. I am not promoting never going to see a doctor. I am not promoting that the, that, that the, the Lord doesn't challenge us to focus on earthly things sometimes. But the Lord doesn't challenge us to look for an earthly future because we naturally look for that. We look for having things. We look for being things. We look forward to those things. It's natural. I mean, there's a nature that, that doesn't desire to depart from this earth. And within this nature, there's a concern about security of the future. I mean, there's all kinds of these things. And for the young folk, some of the thoughts might be, will I ever get married and live happily ever after? Will I be stuck in this same old rut of life that I'm stuck in, this same old town that I'm stuck in, this same old whatever it is? Naturally, we see the things of the earth. Young folks see finances. Old folks see the future. What am I going to do? This is what people do. Naturally. So God doesn't have to get us worried about setting our affection on getting older and setting our future here because we're going to naturally do that. He has to keep challenging us. Set your affection on things above. Set your affections on the things of God. He wants us to get our focus on the things, not the things that we naturally do, but the, only the things that we can supernaturally do by the grace of God. Living in the will of God day by day in the present tense. This is how it teaches us to pray. And it comes back to our prayers here. Here's how he teaches us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Is that future tense? Or does God live in heaven now? <laughs> now. Present tense. Watch this. Hallowed be thy name next year. No. Now. Thy kingdom come. Is that something you want to happen 10 years from now? Or do you want to live in his kingdom now? Is, do you want him, his kingdom to rule and reign now in earth as it is in heaven? I mean, thy will be done in earth. Do we want that done now or do we want that done next year? Do we want that done after we get a new president or do we want that done while we have the same president we have? I mean, when do you want it to happen? He's teaching us to pray for the now. Not for the future. His will is always 
and completely done, completely and continuously done in heaven. Notice this. Give us this diet next week's bread. No! Our daily bread. Bring us manna from heaven now. I need it now. Forgive us our debts. Ten years from now. No, now. Deliver us or lead us not into temptation. That's the now thing. Deliver us from evil. That's the now thing. Yep. For thine is going to be the kingdom, the power, and the glory. No. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever. It is. We are to live in the now. The Lord did not teach us to pray for the future. He taught us to pray for the present. Lord, lead me now. And I'll have whatever I need now and later. If you leave me now, then I'll have what I need now and later. Right. You say, what do you mean? Do I put away money for plans for the future, for a future goal and gain? Is that why I do it? Or do I put away money because the King of Kings says, put some money in your bank account today? Which way do you do it? Because I've got man's, my will, or thy will? Thy will. Thy will is do this. Yep. Not worried about why. To obey is better than sacrifice. I hearken than the fat of ram. I'm doing it because. Yep. Because he says do this. Not even thinking about why I'm doing it, a future. But thinking about, the Lord said, put this money away. The Lord said, put it, money into your 401, 401k, your work off. Put money into an IRA. Buy a new hat. The Lord says, do this. You know what you do? I do it because the Lord says. Come on. Not with my plans. Because my plans boast not of tomorrow. There you, go. you can plan all you want to. The economy can blow apart. Your yeah. 401ks can drop from uh, however much they are to half in three months. So how do you know? Totally. You say, what happened? My 401k dropped. Ten thousand dollars, though, almost overnight, seemed like it happens. I'm not. Let me say this. I, I'm not saying that. Uh, that I make the statement. Do I put away because the King of Kings says save money? Yeah. If He tells me to save some money today, I save some money today. I'm not talking, let me say this, about finding a birth. But I'm talking about hearing a voice. That voice will most will be able to be backed up with a birth. But can I say, I can find verses, and, and I've talked to a brother about this the other day, I can find verses, it's not good for a man to be alone. Yep. Their verse says that. Yep. And guess what? Somebody says, well, God wants me to get married. I can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and the context of that is about not getting married. And God, and God says, good for a man not to touch a woman. And the context is married. Not good for a man to be alone. Good or man, not to touch a woman. He didn't say a young man, I just, I just want to give you a Bible. He did not say a young man who's not married to that woman is good for him not to touch. 
He said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. The context of that chapter is marriage. I could go through that whole chapter and show you how it's better not to get married than it is to get married. That's Bible. And God speaks to your heart in those verses. Either way, God speaks to your heart. And, and, and I say that because what happens is our tendency is to, to focus on my will and my future. But if we learn to live focused on today, earth-wise, and learn to live in the endless today, eternity-wise, we'd be seeking the Lord to gird us with strength and to make our way perfect. Have Him gird our strength instead of give us a supply for the future. I do not need to fight to put up canned goods for 10 years from now because we're going to have an apocalypse of some sort. We're going to have a rapture in two days from now. Now, if I'm obedient to God, He can feed me by ravens. Or He can have, he can have me canning food and I can have food. Either one's okay. My job is to obey God today. So, gird us with strength. We'd be asking them to lead us to souls instead of bring me a bride or a husband. If our life is on, what can we do today? Let me say this. I'm going to say this. You're most likely not going to get married to the bride that the girl they meet. Most likely. So, many young folks say, let's live for today, but they really mean let's live irresponsibly. You know, let's live for today. Live for today. Don't worry about the future. Just live for today. They need to enjoy the party. Eat, drink, and be merry. Enjoy, just enjoy life. And the problem with their mindset is not about living for the moment, but living without focus. They're not living for the Lord today. Focus on what I can do today. What I need today. How can I glorify God today? Not next week. Not when I get all my other stuff in a row. Because this night, my soul might be required of that. And when that happens, all that matters is that I glorify God today. That's living with the imminent return in sight. And that makes our prayer side like in pray with the imminent return in sight. By setting our affection on eternal. We must, set our, we must set our affections because our affections are not naturally bent that way. It must be purpose to set our affections. So God does not tell us to worry about tomorrow. He says, but it's not a tomorrow. But He does tell us to set our affections to die at this moment on things of eternal purpose, things of eternal things for the glory of God. I'd ask this question. As we pray, do we pray, Lord, by grace, as I yield myself to you, enable me to die? Or do we pray, Lord, Make my future okay. What happens is, and I'm not saying not to ever think about the 